פרופסור הרמן שטראוס, You were a brilliant Jewish physician and scientist in Berlin for 50 years. For 32 of them, you were director of the internal ward at the Jewish hospital. Your scientific achievements won your global recognition. In July 1942, you and your wife were deported to Theresienstadt. During the war, you wrote your autobiography and contributed to the history of medicine in Germany and the place of the Jews in it. In addition, you condemned and, and, and memorialized life in the Theresienstadt ghetto. You headed the scientific committee of the health department in Theresienstadt. You are responsible for a series of lectures delivered to the ghetto's physicians to cope with morbidity in the ghetto. You yourself gave 56 lectures in the ghetto. In October 1944, after two years of a hardship in the ghetto, you died of a heart attack at age 76 and were buried in the ghetto. Israel Melikovsky, you undertook the heavy load of directing the health department in the largest of the ghettos, in the Warsaw Ghetto. You run the entire medical system that you and your staff established in the ghetto, hospitals, clinics, in-service training, and research. You took responsibility and led to underground hunger study with the best physicians and scientists in the ghetto. You established the underground medical faculty in the ghetto. There, 500 students were trained. In your writing during the ghetto period, you left us the message that all the medical work in the ghetto was the only possible answer to the murderers. And then you wrote, I shall not wholly die. Dr. Aaron Peek, at the 69 age, you were deported to the Shavli Ghetto in Lithuania. There, you set out to memorialize the history of the Jewish people during the Holocaust, including the fate of the Jewish physicians. You shared with us the tragic plight of the physicians. They had to save the pregnant women and the whole ghetto for annihilation. You also memorialized the other side of the coin. You described how the Jews set up the hospital in the ghetto on their own initiative. Since there was no other place in the crowded ghetto, they set it up in the cemetery. You wrote that this should be seen as an extraordinary phenomenon. Just months before the liquidation of the ghetto, you finally broke under illness, illness and torture, and died at age 72. Arthur Kessler, Dr. Arthur Kessler, you were 39 years old in September 1942 when you and the Jews of the Bukovina were deported to Vapniarka, concentration camp in Transistria. The Jews in the camp began to suffer from symptom of spastic uh, of spastic paralysis in the legs. The disease spread to 800 of the 1,200 Jews in uh, the camp. Dr. Kessler, you diagnosed this strange phenomenon. You understood that it was caused by the camp diet that was based to, on a toxic chickling piece mixed with the bread using a small uh, supply of vitamins and medicine from uh, herbs growing around the camp, you and other physicians treated the patients. Dr. Kessler, you left us a diary and documents. You recorded the epidemics and the findings of, you, of your research conducted under difficult conditions to find a cure. Dr. Gross Shingal, 
I only recently learned about your activities during the Holocaust, and I was amazed. You are a brave physician. In the early stage of the occupation, you were director of the Jewish hospital in Kalish until it was destroyed. In December 1939, about 15,000 of the city's Jews were sent to the general government, and about 600 stayed behind as a workforce. You faced especially difficult conditions. The hospital served more than 1,000 patients who had arrived from a war camps near the Kalish ghetto. In October 1940, about 300 patients were taken from the hospital in black gas vans. In July 1942, you were sent with the last of the Jews to lodge and died in Auschwitz. Dr. Anna Brauda Eller, through the whole of the ghetto period, you were director of the Children's Hospital in the Warsaw Ghetto. Under impossible condition, you led a staff of physicians and nurses in the ghetto to provide the best possible medical services to the helpless children of the ghetto. When the deport deportation began, you had many chances to escape from the ghetto into hiding, but you chose to stay with the patients until the last moment, and they were killed in a bunker during the Warsaw Ghetto uprising. These physicians are only a handful of the thousands of men and women, Zionist and Bundist, religious Jews, assimilated Jews, and converted to Christianity. All of them enlisted to provide a medical service to the Jews in the ghettos and camps in the different occupied areas. I will now go on to claim that the medical activity in the ghettos was a unique historical phenomenon that demands explanation. I will examine, examine it from different uh, perspective. First, I will point to the ununiqueness of the phenomenon of establishing a Jewish medical system in the ghettos compared to other cases of genocide. A look at the research literature up to 2010 in the medical and genocide fields show that the genocide research does not address the medical systems of the victim society as the events were happening. The subject does not really exist. In contrast, research of the Jewish Holocaust not only gives great attention to the study of the organized Jewish medical activity, but the Jews began its documentation during the Holocaust itself. Research of the topic began directly after the Holocaust and has increased especially over the last two decades. Many of the researchers sitting here today have devoted either broad or more focused research on different aspects of the field of Jewish medicine. This phenomenon is unique to the Holocaust and has no parallel in any other case of genocide. What, pic what picture emerged from the picture? Studies of medicine during the Holocaust point to a phenomenon of establishing independent Jewish medical system with modern professional characteristics by persecuted Jewish victims themselves, completely under their own steam. This is a unique phenomenon that has never been seen in other cases of mass atrocities and genocide. It can be assumed that it is not by chance that no research has been written about an organized medical response by other genocide victims. No such organization seems to have been created. If it had been, there is no doubt that in today's reality, it would have uh, received wide international media coverage. In other words, the research of Jewish medicine during the Holocaust is unique because the phenomenon is unique in itself. So what are the characteristics of the phenomenon? The overall char characteristic of all the ghettos was of the Jews as a separated and segregated community, a society under appalling living conditions that caused terrible sanitation and disease, similarly only to the condition of other persecuted societies in, its, in situation of genocide and ethnic cleansing. In all those cases of persecution and genocide, we are witness 
to the collapse of the medical system of the persecuted society. If services are provided, then only by international organizations. Not so in the case of Jewish medicine in the ghettos. Under the difficult conditions, medical and health services operated in all the large and medium-sized ghettos, according to modern public health conceptions, sanitation, humanization, quarantine of the sick, and as far as possible, quality of control of food. Another surprising feature was that the medical system dealt not only with emergency medicine or uh, the treatment of patients. During this period of hardship, it continues with routine medical system activities. The study of medicine, in-service training, and research, and have a very nice background. From the second perspective, I will point to prominent part of the medical activity in the ghettos. I will claim that they were influenced by the development of the status of medicine and public health in the modern nation state. An, ob an uh, ob observation of the medical and health system in the ghettos clearly presents two important components. One, a medical system that includes or organized medical institutions to serve the entire population, all the population. Two, public health policy implemented by Jewish uh, physicians and leaders in the ghetto, such as disease prevention in uh, initiative, immunization, etc. These uh, components, uh, these components appearing starting from the end of the 18th century with the creation of the modern central centralized states who saw themselves as responsible for public health. They set up public medical treatment systems, schools of medicine and nursing, and provided support for research to find solution to morbidity. Hence, the development of the public health system in a particular society seems to be an indicator of its general advancement. Despite the limitation and difficulties, the medical and health system in the ghetto reflect, reflects a distinctly modern society. And the question is asked, how did this come about? What made this unique phenomenon possible? The establishment of medical system under ghetto condi conditions? From the third perspective, I will claim that it uh, is necessary to view the medical activity in the ghettos as a continued development of the Jews of Poland and uh, in other places in the interwar period. The speed the scope and the standard of the organization of the Jewish medical services in the ghetto grew out of the Jewish medical infrastructure that had developed during the interwar period. For example, in Poland, which had the largest uh, concentration of Jews in Europe, about three and a half million, million and, uh, independent, uh, they, they, they built an independent uh, ethnic national system of Jewish medical institution was set up. The system served the country's entire Jewish population. These Jewish services require Jewish professionals in all fields of medicine. In other words, in addition to the 2,000 years old tradition of Jews as physicians, the medical activity had now take, uh, take on a uh, state-like infrastructure. What led to this development in the Jewish history? In this period, secularization and modernization process increased among the Jews. A secular Jewish education system was established, and many parents sent their children to non-Jewish schools. Hence, many Jewish students went on to university to study medicine, a profession highly esteemed in Judaism. This process was very noticeable in Europe as a whole, but especially in Poland. As a result of all this, you will not be surprised to hear that in 1931, for instance, there were more than uh, 4,000 independent Jewish physicians in Poland, 56% uh, uh, of all independent physicians in the country. 
And among the Jews who entered to Warsaw Ghetto, for example, 800 uh, of them were physicians. In addition, Poland, with uh, its newfound interwar independence, was extremely intolerant of minorities, and the Jews in particular suffered. This transient independent group warrants among the Jews, even though the Jewish society was uh, uh, divided among uh, diverse ideological and uh, disagreement. Thus, the Jewish communities developed Jewish hospitals and health organizations. Increasing antisemitism accelerated the development of the Jewish medical activity. Antisemitism in, in institutes of higher education drove many Jews to medical schools outside Poland, mainly in Germany and Austria. They returned to Poland with the most up-to-date knowledge which they impl implemented in the Jewish medical institution. In other words, the Jewish physicians in Poland were at the forefront of modern medicine and brought all their knowledge and experience with them into the ghettos. From the first perspective, I will mention several important aspects related to Nazism. Medical system under the Nazi regime is a huge paradox. The Nazis' anti-Jewish policy was based on racist anti-Semitic ideology that did not recognize Jews as a human with a right to life. We heard it from Dan. It was them as bacteria, a point that should have led to the thought that the concentration of hordes of Jews in an uh, enclosed space would lead to rapid collapse and to uncontrolled, uncontrolled disease. The ghettos were indeed set up, even though German authorities were afraid of the Jews of the Jews' disease and of the spread of epidemics in the ghettos, they apparently assumed that the Jews, Jews would be able to cope with the medical problem because there were so many physicians and nurses among them. This assessment was based on the, reali on the reality of the Jews, whom the Germans in fact recognized as talented human beings. The Jews perceived the living condition created by the Germans in the ghettos, which led to death by starvation and disease, as worsening in their treatment. Today, we believe that the ghettos were not part of the final solution, but uh, the Jewish leaders, physicians, and others perceived creation of the ghettos as motivated by the idea that the Jews could be exterminated by creating conditions that would, that would naturally uh, decrease their number. The physician and many others in the ghetto uh, enlisted to fight against the Nazis' goal and attempted to save individual lives and the Jew Jewish people as a whole. The medical system set up by the Jews in the ghettos must be examined from this angle. For what reason did the medical staff in the ghettos invest so much of their little strength and few resources in treating patients who in any event would doomed. What was the point of all the institutions, activities, and the research if all the inhabitants of the ghetto were condemned to death? The obvious answer is until, until the deportation started, the ghetto inmates did not uh, foresee the active systematic extermination process, but only gradual destruction. They saw that despite the high mortality rate, disease and starvation, many would survive if they only received suitable treatment. Apparently, this was the motivation for maintaining active medical system. However, this answer does not explain everything. As can be seen from the diaries and written reports of physicians and nurses, even before the mass deportation began, there were, there were those who doubted the rationality of helping the sick. Therefore, it can be assumed that most people have a basic survival instinct and with a, and a wish to continue functioning for, a, for as long as they are able to breathe. Moreover, the opportunity to relieve people's suffering 
does not lose its value just because the patients will die or suffer in the long term. If this was the case, there would be no reason to care for the very old whose lives are certain to end soon. Apparently, relevant also is the aspect of Jewish tradition, which emphasizes the supreme value of life and the saving of life. It is from here that the effort to provide phys physical care and to reduce suffering were derived. The ethical and health system established by the Jews in the different ghettos is a unique historical phenomenon unprecedented in history.